one billion five hundred fifty two, one billion five hundred fifty three, one billion five hundred fifty. Hey there, Jimmy. What are you doing? Oh golly gosh, Doctor, you made me lose count. I'm trying to quantify all this DNA. It is taking me forever. Jimmy, what if I told you there was a better way? Oh golly, is there? Boy, have I got the solution for you. Some of the techniques you can use are absorbent spectrophotometry, slot blot hybridization, Pika Green, and real-time quantitative PCR. Well, how do they work? UV absorbent spectrophotometry takes advantage of the unique nucleotide structures of RNA and DNA. They all contain benzene-like ring structures that have an alternating single and double bond. But to understand the absorbance, we have to go even smaller to the electron orbitals of the carbon atoms. In this hexagonal structure, all of the p orbitals overlap, allowing for delocalization of the electrons and thus the ability of the ring to absorb in the UV spectrum. As can be seen with the bases, the higher the number of conjugated double bonds, the higher the absorption wavelength. Pika green is a molecule that fluoresces when it binds to double-stranded DNA. Fluorescence works through the excitation of a molecule through one wavelength and the emission of the energy through another wavelength. When pika green is free-floating, its fluorescence is quenched, and energy output occurs through intramolecular fluctuations. Those are vibrations, Jimmy. When pika green binds to double-stranded DNA, the vibrations are stabilized, and energy output occurs via emission. The energy is emitted at 520 nanometers with an intensity thousands of times brighter than the free-floating pika green molecule. However, the pika green binding is non-specific, so it can't be differentiated from sample contamination, and a set of DNA standards is needed for quantification. Real-time quantitative PCR applies these non-specific DNA binding fluorescent techniques with the real-time replications of double-stranded DNA. When a new strand is made, the probe binds and fluoresces. By measuring this rate of production, the initial quantity can be calculated. And because PCR is amplifying only a specific sequence of DNA, this allows real-time quantitative PCR to be an extremely accurate method, allowing for species and even sex specificity of the measurements. Golly gosh, those sound great. Can we give them a go? Sure thing. My results didn't work the way I wanted them to. What could have gone wrong? Well, Jimmy, that's because you're not very bright. But making mistakes is part of being a scientist. During DNA and RNA extraction, we used cariotropic agents to lyse the cells, so you may not have washed your sample properly, leaving behind the salts that can denature double-stranded DNA. Single-stranded DNA absorbs more than double-stranded DNA at 260 nanometers, and this could have affected your results. We can test for this purity by using absorbance ratio of 260 nanometers over 280 nanometers for contaminating proteins, and 260 nanometers over 230 nanometers for contaminating salts. Alkaline pH can also have a similar effect and it is important to control for these factors in your experiment. Thanks for the help, Doc. Now I know quantifying my DNA and RNA is as easy as one, two, three. Oh, wait.